Right now, the spotlight is shining bright on the world's top technology companies, honing in on their many missteps and calling them out for their oversized impact on humanity, democracy, and trust. We have tech leaders racing to space, comparing the size of their rockets, and social networking giants designing complex algorithmic ads to keep our kids in their pipeline. As leaders gather here today, it might feel like there's a thick line between what you do and what big tech does. But as you embrace a tech-first strategy, which is an obvious path to succeed in today's digital world, that line will soon begin to blur. After all, every leading organization is on their way to becoming a technology business, or maybe you already are. So it's only fair to say that the same challenges that plague big tech will come knocking on your door. These challenges will be well discussed at today's Apex CEO Summit, including equity, transparency, sustainability, and perhaps most important, trust. When you open the door to the digital disruption opportunity, there's a lot more than digital disruption that comes inside. You now have the power to create jobs and kill jobs, collect data and protect data, save the planet and connect its people. The digital disruption opportunity isn't new. In normal times, we were just too slow to make it a priority. However, over the past year and a half, the top organizations in the world have successfully put their best tech minds to work. And as a result, we're witnessing rapid change and relentless adaptation, extraordinary progress in chaotic times. Let's take a minute to look at some of this work. Innovative launches and pilot projects that we've seen ramp up all around the world. In Canada, tiny pink robots are delivering restaurant meals. This little machine is named Jeffrey after Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI. In Singapore, a four-legged robot called Spot patrols parks to make sure visitors maintain social distancing. Thanks to a fitted camera, the robot also records how many visitors spend time in these public spaces. In New Zealand, NFC tags work alongside the government's COVID tracer app to automatically record a person's presence for superior contact tracing, working hard to keep everyone in that country safe. In the United States, curbside pickup among retailers grew from 6.9% of businesses at the end of 2019 to almost 44% of businesses by the summer of 2020. While store owners have historically been slow at adopting new technologies, extraordinary circumstances meant they had to adapt or die. In China, robots screen kindergarten kids to help them safely get back to class, keeping the children entertained along the way. As you can see, they're putting their little red card on top, which is showing their name, and uh, it's gonna bring up their profile. Bless them. They open their little mouths and uh, it's going to test their hands, their temperature, it's going to test their eyes and see whether basically they're safe to go in. And everyone with adequate internet access learned how to work remotely, even if that meant there were sometimes technical challenges on the way. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to... Uh, uh -huh. take Take we're trying look. to, we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not, I'm not a cat. Yes, a digital first path is filled with twists and turns for end users and for businesses. The big tech businesses know this all too well. They started speeding down this road in the late 1990s, waving an unofficial banner with a dangerous message, follow us to move fast and break things. 20 years later, this way of doing business in the technology era must be put to rest. This mantra must fade into obscurity. In fact, let's be frank, we are drowning in technology but we're starving for a new generation of business leaders to get behind the wheel. The next generation of digital disruption opportunity requires a brand new take on an old way of thinking. If we assume that most leading businesses of tomorrow need to be technology companies today, the business of technology banner needs a rewrite and perhaps something like this could work. Follow us to move fast and fix things. 
and bring people, the planet, and purpose along for the ride. After all, today's event is all about building a foundation for a better future, and I'm confident that this can happen. While many business of technology speakers are pessimistic about the future, I'm an optimist, maybe mostly because hope is an incredible antidote for despair. So let's assume that successful leaders of tomorrow must move fast and fix things. So in order to take people along for a ride, a lot has to happen in terms of designing a better way to work. In 2021, the future of work is like a Facebook update in 2010. It's complicated. Whether you want to have your team back in the office, working from home, or doing a little bit of both, their wellness is now your responsibility. Yes, in many industries, remote work is here to stay in one way or another. We also know that remote workers are working longer hours, often well beyond 40 hours a week, and this comes at a cost. Anxiety is affecting about 52% of home workers, and 76% of home workers have had no training at all in terms of how to work well from home. Another serious issue is availability creep, meaning workers have no boundaries anymore in terms of when to shut things down. To borrow a quote from a Forbes writer, the pandemic was all about sickness, and the byproduct is a sense of future wellness. So now you have a couple of challenges ahead. You probably are a technology organization, and you are definitely responsible for your team's well-being. And these are both important responsibilities. If we go back to our discussion on the digital opportunity, we can dissect exactly what this means. From a definition standpoint, an opportunity is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. But this probably isn't a strong enough statement going into 2022. The digital disruption opportunity might be better explained as the digital disruption imperative. In 1999, we talked about opportunities in this space, but today, the need for real change is here. There are few organizations, or even governments for that matter, that will be able to thrive in the future without a major rethink. So think less about the opportunity in front of you and more about the imperative calling you. Now, one of the final questions that needs answering is this. How do you bring everyone along for the ride? What responsibility do leaders have beyond their businesses? For starters, every organization should care deeply about the digital infrastructure divide. There are 7.8 billion people in the world, and a whopping 3.6 billion do not have basic internet access. The digital imperative means bridging this gap. We've been talking about disruption for decades, but it's only recently that we've truly been disrupted. The COVID-19 pandemic forced transformation to happen. And as we move forward toward our post-pandemic recovery, it won't be technology alone that saves us, but it certainly offers up the best tools we have, especially if we can align this technology with better leaders, prepared to face the future with a human-first approach. This means that while the big tech companies of today have broken parts of humanity, democracy, and trust, it's up to all of us to figure out a way to fix it and bring as many people, the planet, and a purpose along for the ride.